Section 5.3, the divergence and integral tests. This is from OpenStax Calculus Volume 2. At the bottom of every page, there's a link to where you can download this textbook for free. These videos are meant to supplement that book and make it work better for you, so they go very well together. All right, so in this section, we have the divergence test. This is the simplest of all tests that we're going to talk about to determine if a series converges or diverges. And it says that if the limit as n goes to infinity of a n, a sub n, equals c, so some number that's not 0, or the limit does not exist, then that series, the sum of, from 1 to infinity of a sub n, diverges. So if you think about that for just a second, what that means is that the tail of that series, as the terms go farther and farther, if the terms are not getting smaller that you're adding on, if they don't get smaller, then it's got to be going, it can't be converging. It's got to be going to infinity or something, or it's bouncing around like an alternating series, or alternating sequence. So the tail has to go to zero. The end of our sequence, our sequence must be going to zero. That does not necessarily mean that if something diverges, that the tail is going to zero, because we can have something like the alternating sequence, negative one, zero, negative one, zero, negative one, zero, where that's, yeah, it's diverging, but the tail of it is never getting smaller. Okay, so the converse of that is not true. So pay careful attention to the order that comes in. Now, let's apply the divergence test to this sequence. Okay, if it proves that it diverges, we're going to state that it does, it diverges. Otherwise, indicate that it's inconclusive because it doesn't give us any information if it doesn't go to zero. All right, so the limit limit as n goes to infinity of n over 3n minus 1, that corresponding sequence, that limit is going to be 1 third. So that means, therefore, the sum from 1 to infinity of n over 3n minus 1 diverges. Fantastic news if that's the case. We now know something. We know that it diverges. Next example, we have the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n cubed. Right, well, let's take the limit. See, series just make me excited. I keep writing too fast. The limit of 1 over n cubed is 0. Now, looking back at that, it's as if the limit is some number that is not 0 then it diverges. So we don't know. The divergence test is inconclusive. Now that really is not much of an answer. That means, just like um, with medical procedures and anything else, that means we need to look a little closer. We need to take a second look, get another opinion. Okay, so there are lots of tests in this chapter from uh, from uh, section 3 to section 6 that will come in very useful. So just because this one doesn't work does not mean it doesn't converge or doesn't diverge. We just don't know yet. All right, let's apply that to 28. Well, if I take the limit of e to the 1 over n squared, well, this exponent is going to 0, so this is approaching 1. Therefore, n equals 1 to infinity of e to the 1 over n squared diverges. Next, we have number 29, applying the divergence test to this. So let's find the limit of cosine of 1 over n squared. Again, cosine is continuous just like the exponential function is. So this is going to 0, which means that our limit is 1. Therefore, that series, cosine of 1 over n squared, diverges because it is not 0. I would really like for you to be able to read that. OK, there we are. Okay, next in line we have the integral test. Now, our techniques for integration come in very handy here. Okay, so suppose that this series we have has positive terms, 
And suppose that there's a function and a positive integer n such that the following conditions are satisfied. One, f is a continuous function. Two, f is a decreasing function. And three, the values of the sequence, the sequence that makes up our series, a sub n, that the terms, the values of that, agree with our function at every point. That's the idea. They have to be the same. Then in that case, that series, a sub n, and the integral of that function both converge or diverge. Now, that does not mean that they converge or diverge to the same thing, to the same value. It just means that they both either converge or diverge. All right, so let's see what we can do with 1 over n cubed. Now, this one was inconclusive on the last one. Right? We, we actually did this. It was like the second example. And we said it was inconclu the divergence test was inconclusive. So here's us taking a second look. So let's suppose, let's consider f of x equal 1 over x cubed. And just because I don't have much of an idea of where to look, let's take cap n equal to 1. So let's take the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x cubed dx. Okay, now we saw in our last chapter, improper integrals, okay, in chapter 3, that we've actually got to take a limit here. Okay, so I'm going to sort of abuse the notation at this point, okay, and use it a little loosely, but understand that I am taking a limit implicitly here. Okay, so that would be negative 1 over 2x squared. And that is evaluated from 1 to infinity. Okay, so I'm taking the limit for my first term here. So if I take the limit as as um, our value goes to infinity, as x goes to infinity, that is going to be 0. Subtracting, plugging in 1, that would be plus 1 half, and that is 1 half. So that means that this integral converges, and therefore the infinite sum, the series from 1 to infinity of 1 over n cubed converges. Again, I'm not saying what it converges to. I'm just saying it converges. Right, number 31. Use the integral test. So again, let's take f of x equal to 1 over the square root of 2x minus 1. And let's go ahead and use cap n equal to 1 again. If, it, if that doesn't work, then we may need to choose a different value. But we'll start with that. Okay, so the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over, and I'm going to go ahead and write this differently. This is 2x minus 1 to the negative 1 half dx. All right, now, if we take that derivative, or that integral, we will get the square root of 2x minus 1 evaluated from 1 to infinity. If you don't believe me there, let's take the derivative 2x minus 1 to the, whoops, 2x minus 1 to the 1 half. If we take the derivative of that function, we get 1 half, 2x minus 1 to the negative 1 half, times 2, which is 1 over the square root of 2x minus 1. Okay, so that taking our our derivative there. All right, now if I take the limit as x goes to infinity, that is going to be infinity. It's going to be infinite. Okay, now we plug in 1. That's going to be minus 1. Doesn't really matter, so that means this diverges, that integral diverges, and therefore the sum of 1 over the square root of 2n minus 1 diverges. Right, number 32. As always, go to that website, check out the OpenStax textbooks. They have a lot of options, and this book is just, I have to just say, it's really good. Alright, use the integral test to determine whether this series converges or diverges. Well, I'm going to take f of x equal to x over 3x squared plus 1. 
and I'll go ahead and choose capital N equal to 1. Again, if that doesn't work, we'll find something else to use there. All right, so the integral from 1 to infinity of x over 3x squared plus 1 dx. Let's use u substitution here. u is 3x squared plus 1. Then du equals 6x dx. And 1 sixth du equals x dx. That'll take care of our numerator there. Alright. So that is equivalent to 1 sixth. We have du 1 du over u, which is going to be a natural log. So this is 1 sixth. Oh, and that is from 1 to infinity. 1 sixth. Evaluate natural log absolute value of 3x squared plus 1. And absolute values there. Evaluated from 1 to infinity. Okay, taking the limit as x goes to infinity, this is infinity minus something. Okay, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be infinite. It's going to be infinite, so that means, therefore, sum from 1 to infinity of n over 3n squared plus 1 diverges. All right, the last thing, the last topic we have in this section is a p-series. So for any number p, the series 1 over n to the p from 1 to infinity is called a p-series. Now, we've seen a couple of examples, okay? If p, that value of p equals 1, then that is the sum 1 over n, which diverged. That is the harmonic series. p equals 3, we looked at. That would be the sum 1 over n cubed. Okay, that converged. And we showed that by using by using the integral test. And if you try a couple more values, you might convince yourself that this is true. If this converges, if p is greater than 1, and diverges if it's less than or equal to 1. Okay. Take a little minute to convince yourself of that fact, and then hold on to that fact and use it often. Okay. So first, Example 33, determine if it converges or diverges. Well, here p equals 4. That's greater than 1. It converges. Thirty-four, p equals 2 thirds. That is less than or equal to 1. It diverges. Simple enough. Just look for the value of p, okay? If p here, p equals 5 fourths. 5 fourths is greater than 1, so this converges. All right, that'll be really useful in that next section, comparison tests. All right, that's the end of, of this section.